Hey everyone, welcome back to another video on the Wreath Network on TriHackney. Today we're going to be talking about Task 14, Pivoting with Chisel. Chisel is an awesome tool which can be used quickly and easily to set up a tunneled proxy or port forward through a compromised system, regardless of whether you have SSH access or not. It's written in Golang and can be easily compiled for any system with static release uh, binaries for Linux and Windows provided. In many ways, it provides the same functionality as the standard SSH proxying slash port forwarding we covered earlier. However, the fact that it doesn't require SSH access on the compromised target is a big bonus. Before we can use Chisel, we need to download the appropriate binaries from the tool's GitHub release page, which you can find right here. These can be unzipped using gunzip and executed as normal. So here you can see that we're pulling those down, confirming that we've downloaded these, and then we're unzipping them listing them and seeing that we have them all here. So we have the Linux and Windows binaries downloaded. And then if we take a look at them, we can see that they're compiled for one for Linux, uh, the ELF one on the top, and the PE is going to be that Windows file. And then last but not least, we are going to go ahead and make the Linux one executable since we are going to be using that on Linux system. And then we can try running it just to see an example of the usage. You must have an appropriate copy of the chisel binary binary on both the attacking machine and the compromised server. So make sure that you have a copy on your attacking machine too. Copy the file to the remote server with your choice of file transfer method. You could use the web server method covered in the previous task or to shake things up, you could use SCP, which is SCP I for the key. This is just using SSH and then you're transferring or using chisel user at target and then uh, temp chisel username so we're actually taking that chisel binary that we have on our server. So this is the chisel binary that we have and then moving it to temp and then chisel dash username. One thing to note uh, with temp, if the network goes down, this is going to get deleted. So it may be wise to put this in another directory. Uh, just keep that in mind because if it goes offline, your work is going to be gone. The chisel binary has two modes, client and server. You can access the help menus for either with the command chisel client and then or server and then dash dash help. So for example, if we wanted to do, this is the chisel server help, uh, uh, help menu rather, we can see those options here. We will be looking at two uses for chisel in this task, a SOX proxy and port forwarding. However, chisel is a very versatile tool which can be used in many ways not described here. You are encouraged to read through the help pages for the tool for this reason. The help pages are pretty up to date, especially with this being a new tool. It's very nice. Um, and the help pages are actually fairly pleasant to read. Reverse SOX proxy. Let's start by setting, looking at setting up a reverse SOX proxy with chisel. This connects back from a compromised server to a listener waiting on our attacking machine. On our own attacking box, we would use a command that looks something like this. So we have chisel, we're running it in server mode. We're specifying the port that we're going to listen at uh, and then we're saying that we're doing a reverse connection and then we're backgrounding it so the listener uh, this sets up a listener on your chosen port on the compromise host we would use the following command so chisel we're running it in client mode the attacking ip colon the uh, the port that we're listening on r and then socks so saying that we're doing that reverse connection and saying that we are using this as a socks proxy and then backgrounding it this command uh, connects back to the waiting listener on our attacking box, completing the proxy. As before, we are using the ampersand symbol, so that symbol right there, to background the process. So, and then ls, we can see that uh, we're running those commands there. Uh, it looks like we're confirming that we have that binary there, rather. And then we're setting up that uh, chisel, running the it in client mode to connect back to our attacking machine. And down at the bottom, we can see that we're setting up that listener here. Note, this needs to be done in this order. So have it uh, the listener set up first, and then you send the connection back. Notice that despite connecting back to port 1337 successfully, the actual proxy has been opened on 127.0.0.1, uh, 1080. As such, we will be using our port or using port 1080 when sending data through the proxy. And you can see that uh, down here at the bottom. It's a little bit cut off on mine, but it should show up on your screen instead. Note the use of R or capital R colon socks in this command. Capital R is prefixed to remotes, arguments that determine what is being forwarded or proxied, in this case, setting up a proxy, 
when connecting to a chisel server that has been started in reverse mode. It essentially tells ch the chisel client that the server anticipates the proxy or port forward to be made on the client side. So for example, starting a proxy on the compromised target uh, running the client rather than the attacking machine running the server. Once again, reading the chisel help pages for more information is recommended. All you really need to know out of this section is we're starting a server that's listening with chisel on our attacking machine and then we're sending a connection back by running chisel in client mode from our compromise machine. And with that, we're creating a socked proxy. Forward socked proxy. Forward proxies are rarer than reverse proxies for the same reason as reverse shells are more common than bind shells. Generally speaking, egress firewalls handling outbound traffic are less stringent than ingress firewalls. So it, it's easier to connect out from a uh, secured network than it is to connect in because those connections in are going to be pretty restricted. It's one of the reasons why bind ports, uh, which is referenced in here, uh, it, it's hard to connect to those. Just because you can set them up doesn't mean you'll be able to see them just because a firewall might be sitting between you and that port. That said, it's still well worth learning how to set up a forward proxy with chisel. In many ways, the syntax for this is simply reversed from a reverse proxy. So here we can see on the compromised host, we're running it in server mode rather than client mode, specifying the port that we're going to listen on, and then telling it we're going to use a SOX5 proxy. On our own attacking box, we would use chisel, running it in client mode rather than server mode, and then specifying the target IP, the port that it's listening on. Again, this might not work because there's probably a firewall there. And then we're telling it the proxy port um, and that we're going to be running it in SOX mode. The proxy port, I believe, yeah, in this command, the proxy port is the port that will be open for the proxy. It's going to be what's running locally. For example, chisel, client, and then the machine that we're connecting to on 8080. And then we're opening up that proxy, that SOX proxy on port 1337. Would connect to a chisel server running on port 8080 of that quad 10 machine. A SOX proxy would be open on port 1333 of our attacking machine. Proxy change reminder. When sending data through either of these proxies, we would need to set the port in our proxy chains configuration. As Chisel uses a SOX5 proxy, we will need to change the start of the line from SOX4 to SOX5. And you can see that, again, that's changed down here. So just keep that in mind. Chisel is the odd one out here that's using SOX5. Now that we've seen how to use Chisel to create a SOX5 proxy, let's take a look at how to use it uh, at using it to create a port forward with chisel. Remote port forward. A remote port forward is when we connect back from a compromised target the, to create the forward. For a remote port forward on our attacking machine, we would use the exact same command as before. So setting up that listener uh, in server mode. Once again, this sets up a chisel listener for the compromised host to connect back to. The command to connect back is slightly different this time, however. So we're running it in client mode. However, we're changing up the syntax. So we're doing a reverse and we're using this in similar syntax that we actually saw in a previous section, I believe with the SSH reverse uh, uh, SSH tunneling that uh, we're sending that back and we're proxying that or sending that port back specifically. You may recognize this as being very similar to the SSH reverse port forwarding method where we specify the local port open to the target IP and the target port separated by colons. Note the distinction between the listen port and the local port though. Here the listen port is the port we started the chisel server on and the local port is the port we wish to open on our own attacking machine to link with the desired target port. Again, local port is going to be what we're actually going to be using at the end of the day. To use an old example, let's assume that our own IP is 10.10.20.20. The compromised server's IP is 10.10.10.5 and our target is port 22 on 10, 10, 10, 10. Again, this helps to draw this out because there are three machines at play and sometimes it can be complicated to think about how this is going through those machines. The syntax for forwarding 10, 10, 10, uh, 10, 22 back to port 22, 22 on our attacking machine will be as follows. So again, we're sending chisel in client mode of 10, 10, 20, 20 uh, to 1337. Uh, we are sending this port of uh, 2222. Uh, so again, this is very similar to what we saw with the SSH port forwarding. So 
we can see that we're setting this up in that client mode and then connecting back to our machine functioning uh, as a server. Uh, we can do chisel with, or we can uh, use chisel as a server in this way with this command where we are connecting back to the, or we're starting a server at uh, port 1337 and we're specifying that it's gonna be a reverse connection. This would allow us to access 10, 10, 10, 10, 22 via SSH by navigating to uh, the 2222 on our own attacking machine. So I believe these are actually reversed. I believe this needs to be done first just because typically you're gonna set up that client connect or the server connection first rather. So just keep that in mind. Local port forward. As with SSH, a local port forward is where we can uh, connect from our own attacking machine to a chisel server listening on a compromised target. On the tar or compromised target, we would set up a chisel server. So again, we're setting up that server first and we're specifying that we're listening on this port. We can now connect to this from our attacking machine like so. So again, compromised machine is a server in this case. The machine that we're attacking from is our client. And we see our listen IP, so that's the machine, the IP that we're connecting to, or the uh, listen IP, the IP of the machine that we're connecting to, listen port, the port that we've opened on that server in this previous command, and then our local port that we're going to listen on, the target IP that we're actually going to reach, and then the target port on the ultimate target that we want to have access to. For example, to connect to 10, 10, 10, 5, 8,000, the compromised host running a chisel server, forwarding our local port 2222 to uh, 10, 10, 10, 10, 22, our intended target, we could use this command. So again, breaking this down, this is what we're running on our local attacking machine, chisel in client mode. We're connecting to the compromised relay that we're using. So 10, 10, 10, 5 on 8,000. This is our chisel port for that server. This is our local port that we're going to connect to uh, internally once we're done with all this. And then this is the machine that we're targeting that we want to get access to that quad tens. And we're trying to access SSH on that machine. Maybe we're trying to run Hydra or something against it. As with the backgrounded SOCAT processes, we, uh, when we want to destroy our uh, chisel connections, we can use jobs to see a list of backgrounded jobs, then kill and then the number or percent and then number to destroy each of the chisel processes. Note when using chisel on windows, it is important to remember to upload it with the file extension of .exe. Otherwise, it just won't work. Windows will probably be very confused with what you're trying to do with that, as it's not going to see it as a binary. What command would you use to start a chisel server for a reverse connection on your attacking machine? Use port 4242 for the listener and do not background the process. So this is going to be that chisel. Again, we're using it a binary in the current directory that we're in. Chisel server, because we're running it in that server mode as specified up here. And then we specify the port uh, 4242 and then dash dash reverse. Because again, we're doing that reverse connection and we're specifying the port up here. There we go. What command would you use to connect back to this server with a SOX proxy from a compromised host, assuming your own IP is 1020, 1020 and the uh, background in the process? We can do that with dot chisel and we're doing it in client mode because we're connecting to a server. And then the server we're connecting to is 10, 20, 10, 20 on port 42, 42. And we're doing that in a reverse connection with socks. And we are backgrounding this. So putting an ampersand there. Let me go ahead and copy that over here as well. So you guys can see it. There you go. And then how would you forward 10, 10, 10, 10, 3306? So a MySQL port on this target machine to your own 33060 using a chisel remote port forward, assuming your own IP is 1020, 1020, the same, our, the same attacking IP that we had in the previous questions. And the listening port is 1337. We do need to background this. So this one is going to be, again, running the chisel binary in our current working directory but we're gonna be using this as a client in this case because we're already connecting to a server that's already there. 10, 20, 10, 20, and we're connecting to 1337. Let me move my mouse out of the way. And we're doing this reverse connection uh, where we are sending this to 33060 and the target machine that we are giving them access to is 3306. And I'm gonna 
put that over on the side too because I know that's kind of hard to read. Paste selection, and we'll go ahead and submit that. Uh, background that process. So I am missing, hold on. It went through because of regex, but there should be an ampersand at the end there. So just keep that in mind. If you have a chisel server running on port 4444 of 10.10.10.5, how would you create a local port forward opening port 8000 locally and linking it to 10, 10, 10, uh, 10, 80. We can do that again. Last but not least, running the chisel uh, client and we are connecting. Uh, let's see if you have a chisel server running on port 4444 of uh, dot five. So it's 10, 10, 10, 5, 4, 4, 4, 4. And then we are connecting. Uh, the local port forward on 8000 is going to be our listening port, and then we are giving that access to port 80, and I typed that slightly wrong. There we go. I'll copy this over there as well to make it easy to see. So again, this is connecting back to that chisel server that's already running, and we are specifying the address of the chisel server, and then we're telling it what we're actually going to do. So we're porting, you're forwarding this remote port, or th this port on port 80 to 8000 on the host, our attacking machine, which has that chisel server running. So we can mark that as complete, and there we go. That's going to do it for task 14. I will see you guys next time in the video for task 15. Until then, happy hacking.